There are essentially three important elements to mastering live stream audio, and the third one is probably the most important and the least known. When processing audio for our microphone, we need to understand the goal. We aren't trying to make our microphone sound better. Instead, we're trying to make ourselves sound natural. Misunderstanding this is one of the biggest mistakes new streamers make, and in turn, they end up adding too much bass or too much compression. There are three main filters you want to add to your mic. We will always start with a noise gate or downward expander in the processing channel. Chain. I suggest you set the noise gate threshold slightly above any noise creeping into the mix when you aren't speaking. You can do this by watching the audio level in the sound panel and adjusting the threshold based on what you see. But be careful, if you set the threshold too high, it can cut off your vocals. Next, we can compress or add EQ. I typically compress my audio before adding EQ. Compression is used to bring our vocals to the front of the mix while also giving us loudness control by decreasing the dynamic range in the digital signal. In order to do this, I recommend you set a ratio between two and five. And then you can set yourself a moderate threshold between negative 25 and negative 18 decibels. It takes time to perfect compression. So take your time and learn how the filter works. Lastly, EQ is a tool that we use to correct the frequency response of our microphone. Depending on the voice, microphones will typically produce a dark or bright digital signal. Dark being overly bassy and bright being overly trebly. The the Octava 319 condenser microphone has a fairly flat frequency response. Meanwhile, the Shure SM58 dynamic microphone has a brighter frequency response. These mics would have drastically different EQ adjustments, not only because of the frequency response of the microphone, but also because of the person speaking into the mic. These six ranges are the main vocal ranges we can adjust. You will find the main portion of your vocals in the 100 to 300 hertz range, clarity in the 1000 to 4,000 range, and air from 10,000 and above. I suggest toying with these first three ranges by setting different band sizes and a variety of cuts and boosts to understand what they'll do to your voice. The other three ranges carry the bulk of unwanted noise. We can reduce our rumble from 80 hertz and below, remove boxiness or muddiness in the 300 to 600 hertz range, and reduce sibilance or S sounds in the 4,000 to 8,000 range. All of the above ranges depend on your voice, so the only real way to get good with these filters is with practice. The stream mix is the combination of all audio sources into one mix that our viewers hear. On a basic stream setup, we have our microphone source and our desktop source. The problem with this setup is that our desktop audio will have our music audio, our game audio, our browser audio, and any other source that we have on our desktop. This makes it incredibly difficult to manage the loudness of each source. There are a few ways you could solve this problem. You can use the Windows Audio Capture plugin to capture the audio sources on your computer. The downside of this method is you'll have to change the game audio source every time you pick a new game. Alternatively, you can use an app like Voice Meter and separate all your sources within Voice Meter and then set up those sources within OBS. Which leads me into my final and most important key, and that is loudness. In audio, there's an acronym called LUFS, which stands for loudness units relative to full scale, which is just a fancy way of saying how loud audio is. YouTube has a standard of negative 14 LUFs, and you can even find that data directly from the videos on YouTube. And yet, nobody is talking about this topic when it comes to streaming. This is probably because Twitch hasn't put out a LUF standard for us to meet, but we can assume it's probably somewhere between negative 16 and negative 14. So how do you achieve negative 14 or negative 16 LUFs? Well, Ulean has created a VST plugin for loudness measurement that is free to use. After you install the plugin, you can add it in as a filter on OBS. Yes. The main measure we will look at is the integrated LUFs, which is the average LUF value. We want to consistently speak into the mic and shoot for negative 16 to negative 15 integrated LUFs. One LUF can be equated to one decibel. So to increase or decrease the LUFs, you need to increase or decrease the volume of the source. This is why compression is so important. Compression increases the quiet volumes and decreases the loud volumes. This helps with the consistency of our perceived loud loudness on stream. You can also use the LUFS measurement as a way to standardize your mix. I like to keep my music 20 LUFS below my microphone. I also like to use compression instead of a gain filter to turn the volume of my music down. This way the audio remains extremely consistent. With compression on the music, my music volume barely
barely wavers. I also like to add a little flavor by applying a side chain to my music. This will decrease my music volume when I'm speaking to help keep my voice at the front of the mix. And that's why our mix and loudness is so important. That way we can create a desirable audio experience for our viewers. If you found this video useful, you need to make sure you're not making these three mistakes with your OBS settings. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.